Okay, folks, welcome back. This is going to be me attempting again to show you how to import your data and make a sheet. All right, basic things to get started. Hopefully, you've watched the first video, so I'm going to act like you've done that, but I'm going to go over some stuff. We start, open up Google Sheets. We know that we want to measure time, which was in seconds, versus temperature, which was in Celsius. Okay, so if you uh, notice here that temperature, uh, that degree Celsius is not a thing. Um, normally, you can go in here and like insert um, special character, but that is not available to us. But we can go out onto the internet and say Unicode degree Celsius, part of my spelling. Right, and Unicode degree Celsius is right here. We can highlight that, copy it, come back in here, and paste it in. So now that's how we get degree Celsius. You could also do that in a Google Doc, okay? So as I showed you yesterday, we knew that we were going by, you know, we started at zero seconds, then 10, then 20, then 30, then 40, then 50, and that's sort of a pain in the butt to do, so if you highlight all that data, come here, grab it, drag it down, it automatically does that. As I said, this can do any, you know, sequence. And so if we want to go by, if we want to go by odds, right, three, six, nine, right. I don't think it's smart enough to do um, a Fibonacci sequence. I don't think it's smart enough to do Fibonacci sequence. I would be very surprised if it was. See, it has no clue what to do with Fibonacci sequence. So just, but if you're doing by counting numbers. So the next step is you would come in here and you would just manually go type in your temperatures. Like so. So now we have those typed in. You just highlight your data, go to insert, go to chart, and it's very important. If this does not say scatter chart, you need to scroll down to where it says scatter chart. And we have our chart. Okay. This is not a very good graph. All right. That's basic. If you collect your data by hand or any time in the future, this is how you need to do it. But we can go one step better than this. So let me go ahead and just delete all of this and show you what I'm talking about. So if you see over here, if you see over here, this is the data we collected the other day, day using veneer graphical analysis. Here is the, make sure I get the right data set. This is data set two. So here's the data set. Um, if you're on your phone, you would long press on these. Since I'm on the computer, I'm just gonna select both columns using the shift key. Hit control C to copy, come over here. Hit control V to copy it down. Data automatically copies, data automatically copies in. We select our two channels, we go insert, chart again, and boom, Bob's your uncle. Um, obviously, this is not a good title, so we're going to want to call it the phase changes, chain, phase changes of water. Again, in Google, I, you know, don't quite like that blue. Let's see, what can I do about that? If I don't like the blue, I could change it to like a red. Uh, if I want to uh, change the point size, I can make them a little bit smaller. I can make them X marks. You know, I can change the, the look and feel of it. But that's simply how it does. Uh, we have a title to our graph, which is good. We have the uh, units made labeled over here. We have the units labeled here, nicely scaled. I can, um, you know, play with major tip marks i could say like minors i could do like a minor count of five i could do stuff like that on the vertical scale again what we could do minor steps of 10 so we can we can we can play with this to make it look a bit more better you know more detail plainer simpler look um hopefully this was helpful to you and see you in class